What's up guys, this is David at Pixel Pro Audio and today I'm gonna to show you how I edit bass in Pro Tools using Elastic Audio. Let's get started. What we're essentially doing with this track is we are going to be stretching it like elastic and moving it in time with the grid or if you don't have a grid, you can just move it in time with the drums. This is a form of editing that we can use to make the bass performance sound tighter and more professional. Now I'm using Pro Tools for this, but you can do this in Studio One using AudioBend, in Logic using FlexTime, or in Cubase using Audio Warp. Let's take a look at the screen here. I've already recorded a bass line, and it's the last track here in the purple. The rest of the tracks above are the drums. All right, so as you can see, um, some of these bass hits are just a little bit off the grid. And some of them are played pretty well, but uh, some are just a little early. I was getting a little excited for that, that downbeat. So let's take a listen here. So for the most part, that was okay, but some of it uh, can definitely be fixed. I do want to put it out there that if the bass is not tracked well, then no amount of editing can, can fix it uh, completely. Um, if you stretch some of these too much, they'll start getting weird artifacts, some sometimes get out of tune. Um, you just track your bass really tightly and make sure it's in tune. And then if you have to, like if someone sends you a bass track that needs something slid over, I can show you the trick I use to do it. So first, we are going to duplicate this main track here, this playlist, so that way we don't lose the original. So I'll come over here to this drop down arrow and we will select duplicate. And I just like to use whatever name it's got there. It, it always does the point O number. Um, that helps me kind of keep track of what I'm doing. But you can always rename them. And you can say, oh, this is the good take. This is edited. This is tuned, whatever. Then I go back to this, the original. Because I, I don't like seeing all those decimal points. I just want clean, clear-cut names to keep my session organized. Now at this point, we can turn on our Elastic Audio. So come over here to the Elastic Audio menu. And you have some different options here. You have Polyphonic, which is uh, used for instruments that play polyphony, so multiple notes at a time, like guitars and pianos. You have Rhythmic, something like drums or percussion. You have monophonic, which is for single note instruments like bass or vocals. And I never use various speed. Um, and X form, which is the highest quality of elastic audio. What I see a lot of people do is using monophonic on bass and then afterward switching to X form because monophonic isn't as high of quality, it can process faster, and in real time, X-Form needs to render. So it's best just to line everything up as quick as you can with, not as quick as you can, but more quickly with uh, monophonic, and then switch to X-Form before you bounce it, and then you get less time and the highest quality elastic audio. So let's do monophonic. And it's turning on here, okay. And then we go over to this drop down menu here. Uh, you see it says waveform. If we click on it, we go to warp. And we have these little markers here. These are bend markers. And what you can do is you can hover over it, click it, and drag. You gotta make sure that you isolate each one, otherwise you're going to stretch the audio and bend it in ways that it's not supposed to be. So let me undo that, my favorite button. 
So to isolate a, uh, a bend marker, hold shift and you'll see the new icons next to the arrows and then you can click it. It then isolates this bend marker from the others around it. Now unfortunately you're going to have to do that for every single one, but you get pretty used to it. And then you just click and drag the notes into time. Now I like to keep my bass track sounding pretty natural. Uh, I, I track my guitars pretty tightly and I edit my drums to the grid. So having the bass a little bit looser in there, but also being tight enough with the rest of the band really keeps the organic feel of the song, but also maintaining the professional tightness, especially on those downbeats. So you really got to find a good balance between uh, machine tight and organic. So let's keep going on this. So what I'm doing here, I can just zoom in and I can see what notes are off based on my grid here. Now, as you can probably see, this bend marker looks like it's before the transient, but this, this little section here, let me zoom in there, this little section is actually the pick attack. So I like to have that a little bit before the, the grid line and then that's where I usually have the good balance between organic and professionally, you know, machine tight. But see, this one's a little bit early. I'm going to leave that. I didn't notice that before. And I, I should definitely say, use your ears with this kind of stuff. Um, uh, your listeners aren't going to be seeing the grid. They're not going to be judging the bass track on whether or not it's machine locked with the grid. They're going to be measuring whether or not it sounds good. And you should too, because no one else is going to see it or hear it like this. They're going to see it and hear it as music. So just make it sound like that. So this is the part where I noticed it getting a little bit off here. So I'm just going to tighten a few of these up. And again, for this kind of stuff, I'm just holding shift and moving over my bend markers here. Hold shift, click, and drag. All right, this one's really early. Balance that a little bit. This one's really early too. All right, now before we get too far, we should listen to this and see what I've done so far. Something sounded weird there. Okay, so this is that problem area that I heard before. Um, everything else sounded pretty good up to that point, but I definitely want to tighten a few of these things up here. I don't want to do too much but just enough to lock in some of these hits. So we've gone through the entire song now. Make sure to listen to all of this. Um, you do have a backup just in case, but you wanna listen to it before you bounce it and catch any errors that you might have, uh, just because you don't wanna be having to do all this again. <laughs> okay, now that we've gone through and edited the bass, we can change it from monophonic to X form. Let it render. There is no progress bar for this, but the waveform is grayed out, and that means that you won't be able to hear it as it stands because Elastic Audio is rendering the file. When it's done rendering, then it will turn back to the normal color. Sometimes this is good, uh, a good spot to go grab a snack or something, take a little break. Okay. Let's take one final listen to make sure Elastic Audio didn't mess anything up. Sweet. So now that this bass line is edited, 
We can turn off Elastic Audio. So you go over here to the Elastic Audio menu, select None, Disable Elastic Audio, and it gives you a few options. So you can revert it back to the original, that would be the unedited track. You can cancel this and just go back to what you were doing. Or you can commit, and this will bounce all of these little edits into a new track. Let's commit. That's going to save the processing power on a computer. And we have just the bass track, but then you'll see over here the warp and analysis have been grayed out because they are disabled because Elastic Audio is turned off. So this is how you edit bass in Pro Tools using Elastic Audio. Don't forget to leave me a comment below and let me know what other kind of tutorials you guys want to see next. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel, check out our other videos on different DAW tutorials, shock mounts, and even the latest sound samples. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.